Here we go now. If you are ready to live a life of abundance, if you are ready to best your best, then come to the edge. Because if you are not living your life on the edge, you are taking up far too much room. that you are experiencing currently in your life is because of you. I'm your host, Eric Brown, and with me in studio, Mr. Mike Jones. Hey, Eric, good to see you, man. That was strong. Yes, sir. So so walk us through, because in prior episodes, you talked about the powerfulness of words. And what walk us through that. Absolutely. So, so first of all, uh, I'm going to ask you to listen with the intent to be influenced because quite often when you are sitting listening to these podcasts or uh, you're taking a class and you're listening to someone talking about how to improve yourself or those of you that are fortunate enough to be able to buy books uh, for self-improvement, uh, quite often we are listening and reading with the intent to defend what we already know and what we believe. The truth is I'm asking that you listen with the intent to be influenced. So first of all, I want to say this. Words create pictures. You may want to write this down. This is some smoking I said now. Words create pictures. Pictures create emotion. Energy and action follows thought. Now, we're going to talk about the difference between powerful words and powerless words. There are words that will drive you forward and then there are words that will absolutely move you backwards. So how would we then make sure we are using words that drive us forward rather than move us backwards? Yeah, you know, beautiful question. And I really want you to, to, to embrace this. And that's why I was asking you to write it down. Words create pictures. Look at the picture that the words that you are using creates. So if I talk about I can do something, I wanted to start with that one because it's so popular. You know, the little train that could, you know, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Well, we in at Discover Leadership Training believe that the word can is a powerless word. And I know that you're asking yourself, how can the word can be a powerless word? And I'm so glad that you asked. Can is nothing more than a statement of potential. We all can be better at doing what we're doing. We all can love our partner at a much higher level. We all can be more supportive to the people in our lives. We all can be more aware of the foods that we put in our mouth. We all can exercise a little bit more. All of those are statements of potential. There is no commitment there. So look at the picture that the word can create every time you use it. There is no commitment there. There is no picture of you moving forward to absolutely accomplish those things. You're only talking about what is possible. When I truly am willing to make a commitment and create the picture that's going to create some action, I will state, I will be more supportive to my partner. Look at the energy behind the difference in I can in this context and I will. I will be more healthy. I will be more supportive. Whatever those things are that you are truly committed to do, I'm encouraging you to step into them powerfully and understand that the words that you are using have a tremendous amount of power. Wow, that is some smoking hot shit for sure. So what coaching would you give to the audience on how to try this? Uh, you know, that's a powerless word also, y'all. And I know he did that on purpose, but... When you're talking about trying to do something again, I got to bring you back to this. And again, you may want to write this down if you didn't already. Words create pictures. Pictures create emotion. Energy and action follows thought. So if I'm trying to do something, 
it means that I am already focused on failing and not succeeding. Because in the context of this conversation, trying ultimately just becomes an excuse for me not playing full out. It becomes an excuse for me not giving it everything that I have. It makes and it becomes an excuse for me taking no action at all at times. When I'm trying to do something, I am absolutely utilizing that as an excuse. Let me give you a beautiful example. So I made a promise to my beautiful wife that I will be more supportive at home. And let's say that I am not being more supportive and she confronts me about it. If I look at her and say, I'm trying, then there is this expectation that she's going to accept that excuse because I'm supposedly making some kind of an effort. And, and then I go to the ultimate one uh, excuse and I then say, I'm not perfect. Well, in the context of this conversation, you better hold on, baby, because I already know where you just went. Stick with me now. Keep listening with the intent to be influenced. When I said to her that I was going to be more supportive, it is possible in the context of this conversation for me to be 100% perfect by making the choice to be more supportive. There is no circumstance. There is no individual. There is nothing that can happen in this life that would prevent me from being more supportive than me. I'm the only thing. So can I be perfect in the context of being more supportive? Of course I can. Because whether I'm being supportive or I'm not being supportive, that is all a deliberate choice that is being made by me. Now, I know that you got to be willing to accept a higher level of responsibility to accept that, but I want you to examine it and examine your own situation to see where you may be using words like, I can, I'll try, I think, I want to. I mean, all powerless words, I should, all powerless words, they have no energy to move you forward in a positive way. <clears throat> so going to, is that a powerful word? That, that Absolutely is? not. Uh, uh, another powerless word. I'm going to is basically what we refer to at Discover Leadership Training as a someday conversation. S-O-M-E-D-A-Y. Someday. I'm going to. There is no energy. Look at the picture created by the words. You will see that it is not going to produce a positive outcome. In fact, the only outcome is that it's going to produce is no action at all. Wow. So really, when you're framing things, the only way to say it is I will or I will not. I mean, I mean hey, hey, babe, I mean, that, that, that gets to the point, right? I mean, I, I will or I will not. And, and let me throw this in here, too, because I know that there are some people that will benefit from this. Uh, when we're talking about how powerful words are, we also want to talk about what I like to refer to as victim statements. I absolutely want you to be aware that there are victim statements out there and I want you to be aware of what they are because they are complete abdication of responsibility. So the only thing I'm focused on is what I truly want and what I'm willing to do to get there. Absolutely. And when I'm willing to accept 100% personal responsibility for that, then I get rid of the victim statements. So Eric, what is a victim statement that you've connected to during the time that we've been together? Um, I have to. Victim statement. Uh, I must. A victim statement. So think about that. When you are saying to yourself, I have to go and do this thing, whatever that thing is, or I must do this, mm -hmm. I am basically creating a situation where I am a victim. I'm completely abdicating that responsibility to something or somebody else. I have to go out and take the garbage out on Thursday. Uh, 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 that means I don't want to take the garbage out. I'm doing it because my wife is making me do it. And it's not the truth. Basically, you are making the choice to do it, but you are now blaming somebody else and not accepting personal responsibility for the action because you have to or you must, which are absolute victim statements. So I'm encouraging you to speak powerfully, 
to lean into the commitment of what you will do or what you will not do, but get off of the powerless words and absolutely live your life on purpose and with power. So y'all heard it right here on the edge first. Yes, sir. So when you are living your life on the edge, you are leaning into it. You are leaning forward. You are leaning forward because when you do, you are out there on that edge, baby. And unless you are living your life on the edge, you are taking up off too much. Here we go now. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go.